I'm Scott Allen Miller, it's the 5th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today I'm out in Las Panitas enjoying a beautiful sunny morning on the beach. And as I'm out here, someone just asked a question on the channel about uh, what the road is like driving from the airport in Managua down to the southern fishing village of San Juan del Sur, which is the popular tourist hotspot. This is a road that a lot of you are going to take, so we're going to talk about what it's like driving between those places and between Leon as well, as those are the popular routes that are going to head down to San Juan del Sur other than coming up from Costa Rica. So we're going to get to that today. For those not familiar, San Juan del Sur is the most popular tourist destination in Nicaragua and it has become, in the last few years, what Nicaragua is really famous for. It is a calm bay on the southwestern Pacific coast, very close to the Costa Rican border. So it's very popular with people who are traveling in Costa Rica and want to travel north and experience a little bit of Nicaragua, but don't have a lot of time and want to go deep into the country. And it is popular on the backpacking tour because it is a big party hotspot with a lot of nighttime parties and, and hostel activities and those kinds of things. It is also the only major bay in the country. So while we have loads of beautiful Pacific Ocean front all throughout Nicaragua, we don't have calm bays. It is this very surf heavy, uh, mostly surfing and fishing villages all along the coast. San Juan del Sur is by far the largest settlement on the water in the country, uh, and it is a completely different vibe than anywhere else. So even people who are going to more of Nicaragua often want to go there and experience it because it's a world apart. It is very different than the rest of Nicaragua, both in its culture and its physical geography, but also in the uh, people who live there. It is a essentially an expat enclave and has a completely different vibe that you will not experience really anywhere else in the country. So it's very popular. And the only airport here in Nicaragua is Managua, the capital, which is about three hours north of San Juan del Sur. Now, that's not real far, so you have a lot of options to get down there. You can take a taxi, you can take a private shuttle, you can take public buses, or of course you can rent a car and drive. Or if you own a car, you can take that as well, which is what we do. If you're coming from Leon, which is where I am roughly right now, this is the beach at Leon, so we're about 20 minutes outside the city to the west. But if you're coming from Leon proper, the second largest city in the country, which does not have an airport, but is a region separate from the capital that you might be staying in, then the travel time down to San Juan del Sur is gonna be a lot closer to four hours hours, still very manageable. If you're coming from Leon, which I do far more often than I do from Managua to head down to San Juan del Sur, and I have some videos on that, I've shown it on this channel and we show it on my sister channel, Drive Warp, uh, that drive is, is very straightforward and really doesn't go through any major cities. From here, because there's a new highway, Nicaragua 169, that bypasses Managua to go directly from the countryside of Leon out to El Crucero, which is the southern Managua zone up in the mountains south of the city, it has made it that Managua is no longer in the path between here and San Juan del Sur, which has cut the time and the effort of making that trip dramatically. Now, one of the questions that they asked was of, uh, about the quality of roads, uh, specifically between the airport and San Juan del Sur, as well as about rest stops or places to stop and use the bathroom along the route. So we're gonna talk about this a little bit because so many of you who, whether you're coming because you wanna live here or you're looking at just being a tourist and you're wondering how to get around uh, or you are um, considering places to live and you're wondering what it's going to be like getting between. So if you live in San Juan del Sur, what's it like getting to Managua? If you're gonna live in Leon, what's it like getting to different places? Those are things you may be wondering and the quality of roads and the ability to stop places could be factors for you in deciding where you want to live. Maybe if the road is bad, being so far away from a place that you want to go often could be a problem, for example. So let's talk about Leon first, because it's the one I know best, because I do it all the time. From here, we sit on the Pan American Bypass, which is not a real bypass. It is a secondary portion of the, of the Pan American Highway that is used to connect El Salvador to the Pan American route. Here in North America, the only countries that don't sit on the main route of the Pan American Highway are Belize, which has so far out of the way and has no highway crossing it that it is simply not a consideration, and El Salvador, which sits right next to the traditional route of the Pan American, which passes through San Pedro Sula and Tegucigalpa in Honduras, but bypasses the coastal region where it would need to come through to hit El Salvador. So there is an accepted secondary alternative route for the Pan American that passes instead of through Managua, through Leon, Nicaragua, up to the west, through just a tiny slice of Pacific Honduras, and up through El Salvador, going through San Salvador, and then meeting the, the traditional Pan American highway 
up north in Guatemala City. By the time you're north of Guatemala City, there's only one Pan American. By the time you're south of Managua, there's only one. It is only in portions of Nicaragua and in El Salvador that this alternative, and one little slice of Honduras, that this little slice of alternative Pan American Highway exists. So it's a very small thing. So the road heading south out of Leon is the Pan American Bypass, and Nicaragua 169, which is a brand new beautiful highway, connects the Pan American Bypass as it comes out of Leon, pretty far away from the city, to the traditional Pan American up in the mountains south of Managua. So the, the connector between the two is actually probably nicer than the Pan American in either place. All of this is beautiful highway, and the Pan American goes all the way down to the turnoff for San Juan del Sur. So, from Leon all the way to San Juan del Sur, you're on major Pan American, Pan American bypass, or Pan American connector highways. Once you make the turn off to San Juan del Sur, there's really nothing you can do. You have to take that turn off. There are alternative routes to, to San Juan del Sur, but they include things like the Chocolati Road, which is not terrible, but it is not a great highway. We think it's gonna be upgraded pretty soon, but at the moment it is not. So they're the main turn off. Uh, at La Vergen is your only spot to realistically catch the road going over to San Juan del Sur. That's what everyone takes. It is the main road going into San Juan del Sur. So, and that road is absolutely well paved, really nice and easy to drive, no problems at all, and not very long. That turn off to San Juan del Sur is Nicaragua 16 if you're looking at a map. No one here calls the roads by their numbers. That's a funny thing. The signs are everywhere. It's listed on every online map. It's easy to use the numbers and it makes things much less confusing for foreigners who are traveling around the country. But if you're talking to Nicaraguans, they will never have any idea and they will generally deny the existence of the road signs that say the numbers. They will claim that there are no names or numbers on any road. They'll claim they've never heard anything of it. And even if you stand next to the sign and point to it, they'll say they can't see it. It's a weird cultural thing, but it's, it's been, it's, seriously, it is one of the strangest things, the absolute denial of maps, names, and directions. Uh, but getting from Leon to San Juan del Sur, while it takes a fair amount of time, is an extremely easy drive. At no point will you see potholes. You will not see problems with the roads in any way. That road in that entire length for four hours is absolutely pristine and kept that way. It is a very important route for trucks and transport around the country. Of course, if you turn off and go to little villages, you want to go to small vill uh, beaches along the way, you're going to be looking at potentially some, some pretty poor roads that could happen, but going directly from Leon all the way along the west coast to San Juan del Sur, no problems at all. Now, of course, most of that route is going to be shared with the route from Managua, but we'll talk about that in a second. The other portion of this, so you'll have no problem making the drive, and the traffic is generally not bad either. You may have some slow traffic, you may get caught in some, you know, lines of traffic that aren't moving too fast, so if you're in a hurry, that could be a problem, but when it comes to, like, difficulty of driving, as long as you're patient, there's no problems at all. The most difficult portion of the drive coming from Leon is that you will pass through uh, Didiamba, which is uh, a little bit complicated just from how tight the roads are and the weird turns and the heavy traffic as you go through a small village. It's odd that the Pan American Highway passes through the middle of that town. They really should have bypassed it. It is not well set up to handle the traffic, but even that's not really bad. It's just very slow. And if you were to have a traffic accident there, it's rare that you'd be over 10 kilometers an hour because you just cannot get up to speed even in the slow times. There's so much going on in the street. It's one of those little towns where the village market actually goes, it's, it's really a city, goes onto the main road and it's like encroaches the cars. It's such a mess on the Pan American. It's kind of funny, but it's a nice city overall and it is a good place with lots of restaurants. All right, so speaking of restaurants, let's talk about where you can potentially stop as you're traveling from Leon down to San Juan del Sur, or at least until you meet up with the road coming from Managua. So in general, there are not rest stops in Nicaragua. It would be great if there were. We would love if they would put those in and that's sometime in the future. By sometime in the future, I mean it's no one's talking about it. What we do have and is rare is gas stations. Our gas stations generally now, now when I lived here in 2015, this was not the case. Gas stations were atrocious, but now for the majority of gas stations are quite nice. And the same thing in the rest of Central America as well. We have really nice gas stations around the country. They're almost always gonna have bathrooms. Often they are quite nice. Quite often they have food. They almost always have mini marts. It's very easy to deal with. There are not a ton of them, so you do want to be planning pretty heavily. When coming from Leon, you have some of the worst problems uh, getting from uh, up here all the way down to the next gas station stop. So when you're leaving Leon, we have a gas station as you leave the city. That is, there's two uh, gas stations right as you exit the city, the Uno being the last one. You see it on the channel a lot. I talk about it a bit, and it is where uh, Ruben Dario Park 
is. It's like in the middle of Ruben Dario Park. It is the secondary bus stop for the, for the city. So that one on the, the southbound route is the place to stop if you're if you're not coming from home use the bathroom stock up on any snacks and drinks you want to have for the ride because you don't know if you're going to run into anything else for the rest of the journey of course there are little roadside things here and there rarely would they have a bathroom i have no idea where you could possibly stop at one of those for a bathroom but you sometimes can get a drink or a snack if you are traveling along this path the one spot you need to know about is a restaurant called la engorda to the best of my knowledge, they're open all night long and they do have beautiful bathroom facilities and a lot of them. It is a steakhouse on the, I believe, south side or kind of southwestern side of the highway. So if you're traveling uh, southbound towards San Juan del Sur, it'll be on the right. If you're heading into Leon, it's on the left. It is actually over the border. So it's in the state or the Departamento of Managua, not in Leon. But as you're traveling south out of Leon, it'll be the first major thing you hit after you cross that border. There's no signs at the border. So you gotta be watching Google Maps if that's what you're looking for. And it's not in a village. So I can't give you like an address. It's just look it up. It's La Engorda. It's a steakhouse, nice looking place, two stories. Uh, and it has a big parking lot, really easy to pull over, easier than any gas station. They do coffee late at night. So if you need a bathroom or you need to get some caffeine, they're one of the places you can stop. They're also a restaurant, of course. I've never eaten there. Uh, it's not a, I don't know why people stop there along the road, but they do have a great facility and they have bathrooms upstairs, they have bathrooms downstairs, and they have a party facility out back that has bathrooms there too. So they can handle a lot of people needing to stop for the bathroom. And during emergencies with my kids, we have stopped there, no problems. Just get a coffee and life is good. That is important to know because the stretch between Leon and the next official bathroom is really, really long. Once you head south, you're going to do the Pan American Bypass, you're going to take it. Nicaragua 169. There's no bathrooms along 169 currently. There's a new construction of a few things going on along there, so you might have one in the future by the time you know you're actually traveling down. So when you find one, just let us know that it's, it's come up. But I've been to every business on that route, and currently there's no bathroom. As you go through El Crucero, there's also no public bathrooms. There, there are one or two restaurants. In theory, you could stop and maybe find a bathroom you could use in an emergency during the day, but I wouldn't count on it. As you head south out of El Crucero, there is a brand new gas station that has not opened yet. That is going to have a bathroom for sure. It is a beautiful new facility. I expect it open in the, in the next three to six months. The, the construction is basically done. We think they're just waiting for their permits and uh, it is a very nice facility. So we expect El Crucero on the south side on the west side of the road to have a new bathroom, but you can't count on it yet. Going just a little bit farther and really only about another 10 minutes on the north side of Didiamba, the town that I mentioned with the really bad traffic, but before you get into the town, right as you're coming into the city, there is a gas station on the right. This one is our first stop that you know you're gonna have bathrooms around the clock. We use it all the time. It's not a great stop, but it's not bad. You can get snacks, drinks, use the bathroom and fuel up your car. There is, in theory, a few more gas stations as you travel through Didiamba, Dolores, and Hinotepe, which are the uh, the cities that all blend together. You won't even know when you go from one to another, but you're gonna wanna stop at that first one as you go into Didiamba. It's the most reliable, it's the only one I can guarantee is always gonna have what you need. Then, as you travel south, you're not gonna hit another stop until you get to a Pronto, pretty far south in Rivas. Of course, in the city of Rivas itself, there's gonna be places to stop but other than in the city, actually getting off the road and going into the city to the gas stations, uh, you've got to stop at this one place south of Rivas in the middle of nowhere, and then you're you're just on your own until you get to San Juan del Sur. So in a, in a journey of this distance, there are very few bathrooms. It is going to be a little bit of a challenge, uh, and so you don't want to be skipping any, because going like, well, you know, I waited an hour, there's this one, I can, I can wait a little bit longer. No, you don't have a little bit longer. You have most of your journey yet to go before there's another option, so you don't skip them. Uh, if you're doing that path. Now let's look at the other path coming out of Managua. And coming out of Managua, you have a couple of options, but generally you're gonna go on the Eastern route uh, if you're coming from the airport. If you're coming from Managua proper, you may go basically directly from Managua to El Crucero and get right on the path that we talked about there. And of course you have bathrooms in Managua itself. And then you'll have in the future that one in South Crucero, which is only maybe 45 minutes outside of Managua proper, and then Didiamba, which is only an hour, hour and 15 minutes out of Managua, so you're not doing too badly. If you take the eastern route, depending on where you go, you're gonna go through a bunch of the witch villages, uh, and there's potentially bathrooms along that route. I don't drive that portion and need a bathroom that close to Managua ever. I will always have used it in Managua, so that's not really something that comes up for me. As you come down that route, you're going to join up typically around Hinotepe. Some people coming out of Managua will 
go through the middle route, which goes down to Hinotepe, and that will let you stop in Hinotepe or in San Marcos for bathrooms. I don't know all the best locations, but there are several because there are many restaurants, cafes, and those kinds of things. Those are university towns, so they do have a fair amount of activity, even late at night, simply because they have a lot of college students. Most people coming from the airport, though, are gonna take the Eastern route, which goes through Messiah and down to, uh, through Nindiri and Messiah and down to Nandaime. Doing that route, you're going to uh, be more out in the country in, it's odd because you're, you're, it feels more out in the country uh, and you're on smaller roads, but you're going through bigger towns. So you're almost always within a few minutes of a village. And I don't know all the places you could potentially stop along there, but I know there are some gas stations. Uh, the road has been upgraded recently. It's, it's a very nice drive. Uh, and there's lots of small things, restaurants and such that you could stop at, potentially find a bathroom along there. It's not as straightforward, but it's a much shorter drive in general. So the amount that you need to stop is, is generally less. Once you're onto the main Pan American, you won't be that far until you get to Rivas. So if you can go about two hours from Managua to Rivas, you're probably in good shape because you can definitely find bathrooms in Rivas and then it's only an hour on to San Juan del Sur. So you're generally not too bad. Overall bathrooms here are decent, but not fantastic. You're not gonna get absolutely pristine clean bathrooms you're not gonna be super thrilled about them uh, but you're not generally gonna get really awful ones either if you're stopping at these kinds of places if you're stopping in like a small village and you're just asking around about a bathroom you could be you need to be prepared for just about anything uh, remember as always no matter where you go in Nicaragua you can't flush toilet paper look for the trash cans by the toilet that's where that goes I recommend as just a general rule and this goes for a lot of travelers carry toilet paper and wipes with you here in Nicaragua because they don't flush anything it is really common across all society that people use baby wipes uh, in addition to toilet paper. In the United States, I know it's popular for a lot of people to do that, but they're looking for flushable ones, they're a little bit more expensive, and not everyone does it. It hasn't caught on as much. I was surprised when moving to Nicaragua that absolutely everybody carries baby wipes and just uses them because you're throwing them in the trash. Anyway, you don't have to worry about them being flushable, you don't have to worry about them filling up septic systems, you don't have to worry about finding more expensive ones, so they're really popular. Um, and I recommend, and a lot of people I know do this, carry wipes with you if you're gonna be traveling. I mean, you, know, you can buy them in Managua, you don't have to bring them with you from wherever you're coming from. Uh, but it is a general rule when traveling in much of the world, carry some toilet paper with you. And here, because wipes are so popular, carry those with you as well. And you know, my kids have been taught, when they travel, they always have a backpack, and one of the things they always keep in there is a roll of toilet paper. When you go to use some public bathrooms, not that many, you won't encounter this that often, just it's good to be prepared so you never have to worry about it there are places and the costa rican border duty free is one of them so that's a special case that you definitely want to be prepared for they don't provide toilet paper if they do it is an absolutely tiny amount and you pay for it you don't want to be in that situation you do want to carry a small amount of change uh whether it's um small bills like 10 cordobas or even smaller one and five coin uh, Cordoba coins, keep some, just keep them in the in your car, keep them in a pocket, keep them in a backpack, whatever. You don't need a lot, but carry some because bathrooms could be 5, 10, 15 Cordoba sometimes to use, and that's paying for the person who cleans them, provides toilet paper, and those kinds of things, but you're not gonna get a lot. Trust me, those places aren't bad. I've never had a bad experience at one, but I always am glad that I'm carrying some toilet paper with me because just in case, you don't wanna have like three squares and nothing else, right? Like it's not a risk you wanna take having the wipes and some toilet paper it is just peace of mind and especially if you're traveling like a family or multiple people you don't have to carry a lot just carry one roll and one thing of wipes for everybody and you know take turns going to the bathroom like it's not a big deal so that's something we've learned to do sometimes I, like i've traveled with my kids we take the chicken buses someone has a bathroom emergency in the middle of nowhere we jump off the bus in some village we don't know someplace that has no tourism no gas station what do you do you go into the market you say where can i find a bathroom and they'll have one and there's a woman sitting outside and she's like, okay, that's 10 Cordoba. Here's your couple pieces of toilet paper. And they keep them nice and clean. That's their job. They clean them all the time. And, and, you, and it's great that that's a system that works. You pay this small amount to use the bathroom. And we've had emergencies where we didn't have money and they're like, yeah, go ahead, of course. Uh, Cause it's kids, right? Um, so, you know, it's not a terrible system and it allows them to have paid for cleaned public bathrooms in situations where they couldn't do so otherwise, because who's going to pay that person to sit out there and keep it clean? But a little bit of, of preparation and you'll be in much better shape. And you never know when you're going to find a gas station that's just it's run out of toilet paper, you wish you had wipes, whatever. It's just great to be prepared. Make your life simple. That's one of those things. So uh, do that before you get on the road and then you really have the options to stop just about anywhere. Uh, but in general, you're going to have 
enough stops at decent enough places that it won't be a big concern. You, you do want to plan ahead. Don't skip places that have a bathroom um, and, and maybe mark on your map. Okay, we're leaving Managua. We know when we get to Rivas, we don't want to leave Rivas without having hit a bathroom. It's not worth it. Great, make that plan. If you know you can't make it to Rivas, make sure you make a plan for stopping in a village on the way. Look for a new gas station. These are popping up all the time. If you're heading from the Le Leon route, think about stopping at that steakhouse. Definitely make the stop in Didiamba and uh, and you should be good to go for most anyone. And in Hinotepe, if you do end up in Hinotepe for some reason, I like Cafe Alicia. I've never been in their bathrooms. The restaurant's fantastic. Stop, get a coffee. Definitely a great place. I'm, I guarantee their bathrooms are pretty decent. I've never stopped, but I, I, there's no way they're not, right? Such a nice place. And uh, actually the best bathrooms we've ever found in the country are in Dolores between Didiamba and Hinotepe at a really quirky like hotel restaurant place on the north side of the road with a whiskey tasting, tasting room. Never believe the things you find in the oddest places in Nicaragua. So that is the trip. It's a great drive. Don't be afraid of doing the drive at all, whether it's taxi, shuttle, or you're driving it yourself, no problems. You need to make bathroom stops, a little bit of planning, and you won't have any problems. Definitely bring toilet paper and wipes with you. And uh, that is more or less all my recommendations for doing that trip. And uh, don't forget to explore a little bit of Nicaragua outside of San Juan del Sur. And if you're doing that drive, there are several nice villages along that way. For example, Hinotepe is fantastic. They have some of my favorite food, some of the most popular food and cafes in the country. It is a beautiful region. There's so much to see in every part of Nicaragua. So don't limit yourself to just the airport in San Juan del Sur for, for sure. But definitely San Juan del Sur is an interesting party town. If you're looking for that nightlife, if you're looking for that loud music, if you're looking for the constant go-go party of the expat crowd, nothing's going to give you that, that nonstop party like there. Of course, if you're looking for something a little bit more relaxed, the rest of Nicaragua is waiting for you as well. Thanks for joining me here on the channel. If you'd like to help support what we do here, greatly appreciate it. And thank you so much to everyone who does. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Links are down in the description. I'll put it on the screen as well. As always, that really makes a huge difference. Thank you to everyone who supports the channel. It means so much to me and my family that this is something we get to do. It's such an important outreach and something that we enjoy so much. So I'm really glad we're able to continue to do that here in the new year. And as always, please like, subscribe, tell your friends about the show. Let someone know that there's travel guide and relocation information and all kinds of stuff. You can ask your questions on the channel. Obviously, we're answering one here. And uh, as always, if you could take the, the show and just post it on like a Facebook, a Twitter, a, a Reddit, something like that, that will help people discover the show as well. That would mean a lot to us as well. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you from beautiful Nicaragua tomorrow.